Greetings and welcome to In-Depth and DK Rostar. Now, the U.S. Embassy and TNT Entrepreneurship Hub, or eHub, they launched the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs program in May 2021. Now, to find out more about the aim and direction of the program, we are joined by serial entrepreneur and implementer for the program, Deidre Kristalike. Welcome, Deidre. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Dike. And it, it, I'm very glad for us to be able to have this conversation because, and we start off with just getting a, an idea of what the initiative is about, please. Okay, sure. So um, I'm happy that you said we started in May because, um, you know, we're a little bit more than one year old now and we're really excited about that. So we're going into our second year. It's called AWE. We like to call it OR for awesome and stands for Academy of Women's Entrepreneurship. We take women who have businesses and we give them the tools and the foundation that they need to be able to scale up and to continue growing their businesses. And why women as a specific focal point, even to the point that it is in the name of the program? Well, as an entrepreneur myself, one of the things that you know goes without saying is that over the past 10 years, as entrepreneurship has become something more focused on in our country, women have had a lot less opportunities and have not been given the resources that they need to be able to implement the businesses the way they want to. And I think one of the focuses of the U.S. Embassy is to drive the initiative to be able to help women to become a driving part of the economy. So this program fills that initiative that they have for um, creating that area for women to truly be able to create impact from their communities going straight up. And I like the fact, one, you to, well, one, thank you for the answer. Two, you speak about the U.S. Embassy. Three, you talk about having to access or penetrate some spaces that may not have been the easiest to do that. So with regard to opening doors, creating spaces, opportunities, who are some of the stakeholders involved in getting this done? Gosh, that's such a lovely question. Just give me all the stuff to talk about. So... Ideally, um, I would like to say that four years ago, I did an, a US exchange program with the embassy called the Wildlife Program. On that program, I was able to do a fellowship working in um, a company that was very similar to mine because I'm in technology. And then we come back home and we work very closely with the Port of Spain Public Affairs US Embassy Office to implement different initiatives within our communities. Um, acknowledging that I'm a woman and I'm an entrepreneur, so I can identify these areas that you know are lacking um, with with the foundation that we need. It was easy to say, well, you know, these are the things we need. And the AWE program at the time was not in existence. We had actually done a conference first called the Rise Conference, which was the first of its kind in the entire Caribbean. It was 45 women from Latin America and the, well, from the entire Western Hemisphere, Latin America and Caribbean. I came to Trinidad, we had a full three-day only women's conference um, focusing on entrepreneurship. From that, we realized that that little statement, when you put women together, a little magic happens, is entirely true, except it's not a little magic. It's a lot of magic. So from that, we started working a lot more on trying to find areas where we could implement more things, focusing specifically on entrepreneurship, because... With entrepreneurship, you can open so many more doors and so many avenues. Um, I know people tend to talk about all the hot topics like gender-based violence, uh, mental health issues, but entrepreneurship walks straight into each of those avenues. If women are equipped with a way to be financially independent, we make impact in each of those areas. So that's why um, the embassy had that focus. And as an exchange alumni myself, one of the things I, I do is to give back into the community through programs like these. In terms of giving back to the program like this, do you find it is easier to do so having been mentored and possibly from somewhere that is a little outside of Trinidad and Tobago? I ask that question because one of those hot topics as well is the fact that we don't necessarily love our own as much as we should. 
So yes, you've gotten some validation in addition to building capacity outside and bringing it back. Do you find that factors into the equation? Yes, it definitely does. Um, and I think there's a lot of positives with that, also a lot of negatives. Having been exposed to um, a lot of stuff outside of Trinidad, um, enabled me to come back and implement a lot of good practices in my business and in the things that I do. However, I think right here, we have a lot of great talent and we have a lot of very positive forward thinking mentors. And one of the things that we're actually doing with AWE is that we're using the US Exchange alumni who have gone out and who are bringing back these great resources to um, uh, give into the mentorship program. So the women have these women to look up to, but then it trickles down. So although my AWE women aren't leaving, they now have the resources that they can also give back. So it's not always about outside is better, but let's take outside, bring it home and make it better. Definitely, and I, I, I apply those teachings to our situation as opposed to say, okay, well, this is something that's gonna be useful wholesale. But in the two and a half minutes that we have on this side of the conversation, let's bear down on the program a little bit. Who is it directly aiming to say, okay, well, you are the perfect, you are the ideal candidate to be part of this awesome program. And how long does it last? Give me some of those details, thank you. All right, so ideally, you should be a woman. Um, <laughs> it's for women who have businesses that have been started. So our first cohort was very wide. We took women who had just a business idea, who had businesses but weren't registered as yet, who were doing their little cottage type um, business at home, mom and pop stuff. Um, and we use that as a test bed to understand exactly who would benefit most from the program and who we would be able to have the most impact through. So um, now we're going into our third cohort and ideally we have an age, starting age, which is 21 years and over. We do not have a cutoff age. And I know a lot of women really love that because even me, now that I'm getting older, a lot of programs say, if you're not 30 years old or under, it's not for you, 50 years old, but we have no cut of it. So if you're 60 and you have finally decided to enter into that world of entrepreneurship and to follow your passion, we are very welcoming to you. Um, basic requirements, must have a laptop because the program is a hybrid program. Um, during COVID, we did it fully um, virtually, but now we're gonna have it mixed with physical masterclasses. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really open. I think we're just really looking for women who have the passion and the drive and the interest in entrepreneurship and an existing business. And that is something I think we want to resume talking about when we return from the break in terms of like the implications for that level of inclusivity. But we do so when we return. Stay with us. We come back with more. Welcome back. We are going in on this project, looking at the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. We're doing so with implementer for the program, Deidre Crystal Likin. And one of the things that you spoke about just before we took the break, Deidre, is the fact that the cohorts, there would have been two cohorts so far. You also spoke about the fact that you had to be virtual during the pandemic. What has the feedback been like thus far? And what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? You spoke about the masterclass coming out of the pandemic as we were. So, um, you know, I obviously look forward to really boasting and showing off my women here. So my first cohort had it a little bit rough because it was our first one. We had little glitches. It was entirely virtual. The pressure was on for them because they had classes three evenings a week from five to eight. Um, the program itself is in partnership with the Arizona State University for Global Management. So we have a full um, platform called the Dream Builder platform, which consists of 13 modules, business modules, and the women start from the beginning, they go straight through. It's then coupled with online classes with local facilitators that put our local spin on it. For example, the class that speaks about legal aspects, we have our facilitator who is a lovely attorney 
who explains how that fits into our legal framework, registering a business and those types of things. Um, so they had to do that. It was, I would say, a bit tough because they didn't know each other. We had to put them in groups to do projects. And I, I just assume, you know, they, they felt the, the pressure, but they were the first. They had to live up to certain expectations. They wanted the program to be, you know, um, shining at the end. But they did exceptionally well. Um, and I'm. this is where my show of point starts. One of the women there, her name is actually um, Candice Hughes. She is the founder and CEO of Exquisite Liquors. And she was just accepted into the Nudge program. So her backyard rum punch and liqueurs are now going to be stocked on massive shelves, on the Nudge massive shelves. So, um, you know, they did well and they took the opportunity. They really ran with it. They kept looking for more opportunities while implementing the things we would have, you know, um, taught them how to do. We would have given them those tools and they really took their toolbox and put it to work. And I really like the fact that you're talking about looking for opportunities while you're still building capacity, because I think sometimes people think that I need to do one before I do the other as opposed to say, all right, well, while I'm building my expertise, putting tools in my toolkit, I'm looking for opportunities to use them. And, but I also want to go back to that level of inclusivity, please. Uh, we would have found many people using this word pivot, pivoting, the having career choices or be it a, a forceful nudge out of the nest. Uh, what are some of the things that people were saying while learning these things, even though there were the two cohorts, the two new, the first two cohorts and they're learning things while even the program is being tweaked and tinkered with a little bit. But do you, was, was there a different mindset before and after? What were some of those positives that people were saying, because of this course, I am able to do this now? Well, I have to say there was actually quite a lot of that. Um, we really pushed them to think outside of the box. So when it comes down to their products, for example, we have um, Whitney Dorico and her product is Wonderwood. They make wooden products, um, picture frames, desk holders. They get really, really creative awards. They actually made our award for our AWE woman. Um, and I think oftentimes Whitney would tell me that through the program, she was able to clearly identify who her target market was, exactly how she wanted to bring across what the the um, value, the value of her product was. Also, um, the end of the program is an entire pitch training and pitch competition. So this was something that was entirely new to, I would say, 95% of them. They would, for the first time, they were understanding how to pitch, not just the business, but how to present themselves, how to pitch the business in just three minutes as well, which is very tough to do. I've had to do that and then to do that, it's not easy. Um, and through doing that, it helps them to really tune in on the fine details of their business, to understand it. Even though it's your business, it's like having your baby. You know your child, but when they go to kindergarten, you get to know them even better when teachers as well. You know they're naughty. So it helped them to really understand the fine details of their business and to harness that in a way that could be packaged and presented just, you know, really smoothly and really fine. And I really appreciate the holistic aspect of it because sometimes we think of just the business, but especially when that business is something that is kind of finite, you are your business. So being able to present yourself, being able to present your, your product, many times they go hand in hand as opposed to, okay, well, these things are two distinct entities, but what, what are the timelines for the third cohort in terms of starting when does this run to? So applications were actually open about a week ago, um, about a month ago, and they closed recently. On the 15th, which is just a couple of days away, we're going to release the names of the people who have been selected to be a part of this cohort. Um, and I just want to say, whoever's listened to this, on the 15th, you can check social media. It's going to be there, because I know a lot of people have been trying to call and message and email us and really flood us to find out what's going on. But on the 15th, we'll... Uh, contact the successful uh, candidates and let them know what's happening. The program is three months long. And I just want to go back on a word that you used uh, just a few sentences ago when you said holistic. And I just want to mention that it truly is uh, the direction we went in because as women, yeah, we have the business and yeah, we have the home, but people don't, 
people tend to forget that it's not just a joke when they say we multitask. Women take on a lot and it's difficult and it impacts the way you focus on yourself and on your business. So a big part of our um, program for Trinidad and Tobago that is because this program is executed in 80 countries across the world and it's developed very differently. We have incorporated a full module on mental health. Um, so we help women to understand how to de-stress, how to be able to um, properly schedule and give themselves that time management that they need, how to identify when they're on overload and they need to take that, that, that minute down. Also, the network that's created between the women um, creates a really nice, safe space. We have WhatsApp groups, and I can see how they support each other on days when someone's not having such a great day, and the, the love and the support is there, and I think it's something that is truly invaluable to the program. And that's also in terms of thinking that no one is an island. So these challenges are not specific to you. You're not the only person who's saying, but wait, now I thought I did this, but I didn't. And being able to feed into that network, that hive, that hive mind. But uh, also one of the things, what are some of those things that you see people grav gravitating to in terms of many of the businesses? These are the kind of things that they're into. You, you spoke about liquor, you spoke about woodwork. And what are some of those other things that people have been uh, involved in who've passed through those first two cohorts? So we have a lot of the, the types of businesses that are becoming mainstream now. We have a lot of um, body type products, um, skincare creams, body scrubs, um, paper type products where people are doing uh, stationery or the flip side of that where they're offering services with printing stuff. Um, or photocopying, form for now. But I want to say, though, that our courts have actually had some really dynamic, really out of the box, really amazing women with some really out there um, companies and products. We have um, Nuance Solar, and she is actually doing solar panels and creating off-the-grid electricity for homes, um, which I think is absolutely wonderful. We have Anika Bihari, who is a bespoke poetry um, writer and bespoke um, poetry artist. And she has taken that and turned it into an entire business. So I think we have a lot of, of underlying talents that are now coming up through the program. And we're really excited to see how far they take it. And hopefully this is one of the avenues that make people realize that these things are possible. I may not be doing what you are doing, but at the same time, it shows me that I can do what I want to do. In the last minute we have, how do people contact you? How do people look and say, okay, well, my name is there. How do people engage you? All right. So you can find us on Facebook at AWE Trinbago. You can find us on Instagram at AWE Trinbago. And we have a website, www.awett.org. Thank you so much, Deidre Crystal Likin. Thank you for the work that you are doing and the light that it is going to shine in terms of that ripple effect. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronstar. This has been In Depth. Thank you for joining us.